You are you are a godsend. I, I almost died when I when I got your email. Oh, why why is that? Oh, I, I looked up who you were and everything, and you were the first person to audition and 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 the company. And honest to God, you you are fantastic. You you made you made my wife cry, tears in her eyes, and everything. Oh my God! Oh really? really oh, but it's yeah. it's in the it's in the writing, Bob. It's in the the way that it, it's written. It's just such a wonderful story, and it's just nice. But, but, it's just but, lovely to do. You know, you just get involved uh, in it. Uh, you are the master. There's no doubt about it, and it's so <laughs> great. It's, I love it. While Graham was singing, Pa laughed again as he knew that Uwe would be mildly offended if he was here with them. The boys also laughed, as they joined in, as did Pa. It was a family affair. Nobody Nobody loves me, everybody hates me, think I'll go and eat worms. Long ones, short ones, fat ones, thin ones, see how they wriggle and squirm. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me, think I'll go eat worms. Big, fat, juicy ones, little, slimy, skinny ones, hope they don't have germs. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me, think I'll go and eat worms. Long, thin, slimy ones, short, fat, fuzzy ones, ooey, gooey, ooey, gooey worms. I love it, Graham. It's unbelievable. (laughs) Everybody loves it. Oh, my God. You are unbelievable. You are a godsend. Well, thank you very much. It was such a fun book to do. It really was. <laughs> oh, um, I'm, gl- I'm glad. Where did the idea from the for the book come from? Uh, when I was about four or five years old, my father taught me a little poem called Ooey Gooey. It was a worm. Exact same thing, only it was in public domain, but I changed Ooey's name to two O's. But right. O, 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 and so somebody said I robbed him. So I had the idea because I just wanted... I, I, I thought about being at a bar drunk and finding a worm and talking to me, but I, I think, didn't think that would go over too easy. So I decided to make an Adam and Eve and the apple. And it, right. everything just it, everything just flew. It flowed real great. I couldn't believe it. Oh, it's such a lovely book. It really is. It really is nice with a nice message as well. For you, what do you think's the most important message from the audio book? Ah, uh, humanity. Everybody working together and helping each other out, basically. Um, it's this, this, it's a dog eat, dog eat world, like, world right now, and it's really a shame. There's a mm-hmm. lot of people that don't even believe in God. They have no idea. Mm-hmm. And uh, America is ready to fall. I mean, we got so many corruption in there. It's Somebody's got to do something, and hopefully this will get the ball rolling. So where are you right now, Bob? I am in... Uh, but actually, Tonawanda, New York, is right ten minutes from Buffalo, New York. What's the name of it? Tonawanda. Okay, I don't know. I've been to Niagara Falls. Yeah, we oh. are about uh, thirty, mi- twenty minutes from Niagara Falls. Okay, that's a lovely part of the world, then. Yeah, it's a beautiful little area. It, it really is. And um, did you grow up there? Yeah, I've been here my whole life, except for two years in the Marine Corps. Yeah, so you joined the Marines in 73. Why Why yeah. did you join up with the Marines? First of all, thank you for your service. Why oh, did absolutely. you join up in the military? Uh, actually, I got my wife pregnant. We were going together. I was 17. She was 16. And she got pregnant. And uh, her parents didn't want us together. They wanted an abortion. I said, there's no way we're getting an abortion. So we tried to elope and we ran out of money. So we had to come back. And I told them, I'm joining the service. I'm going to come and get her. So at boot camp, after boot camp, they let me marry her. Is and that right? Together. So they, yeah. did you get did you get married quarters then? What, what was that? Did you get married quarters then, the two of you together? Yeah, we got boot married. Camp? Yeah, yeah, but then yeah, you we, got... We got married as soon as I got out of boot camp, just before I went to California. Okay, so yeah. then you were stationed in California. Yeah, 29 Palms, California. Yeah. And I was also uh, in Quantico, Virginia where they had the FBI school and uh, officers training school. That was a that was a pretty cool place too. So you enjoyed the two years, the experience was good, uh, even though you went into it for, for an odd motive, but um, obviously you wanted to serve your country as well. Uh, well, so, actually Vietnam was going on and everybody told me I'm crazy for joining, but I yeah. said, hey, I, I gotta do what I gotta do. And yeah. actually my, my wife wanted me to stay in, but I felt sorry for her parents. Yeah. My father was already dead and I, I know what it is to, you know, miss family. So we came back and she wanted me to stay in. 
and yeah, it, worked, it all worked out. And it she was good. okay to move to California? Yeah, she followed follow me wherever I go. She loved, we were in love. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've been together it's almost 51 and a half years. So. Wow, congratulations. Thank yeah. you, thank you. She's a good woman. She puts a up friend, with me. A friend, it reminds me of a story a friend of mine told me. When I was in, uh, in radio, I used to go to radio conventions, and I went to one in Los Angeles called The Morning Show War Camp, and I met a guy from Kentucky. His name was Brian. Okay. And Brian, he got his girlfriend pregnant, and they couldn't afford the medical bills to have the baby, so he decided right. he'd join the military. So he joined the army, right. and he, he decided he was going to join the army. He was a he was a radio presenter, a ho radio host on a station okay. in Kentucky. So he thought, "I'll join American Forces Broadcasting." Well, right. they, yeah, it, it, you know, they you have to join the army to do that. So they put him through boot camp. He came out of boot camp. <laughs> And they posted him in Korea. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> so he was in South Korea and hated it. Oh, but, yeah, oh. And his wife had to move to. So you got lucky, yeah. although you know you took a chance with Vietnam going no, on. Yeah. The only, yeah. The only reason I got lucky because I was smart enough to get in the computer field. I was a high school dropout, but I aced all the tests in boot camp, and they they sent me right to Quantico, Virginia, right where. Fantastic. At, at yeah. So it wow. Out good. So that's why you ended up when you came back to. Uh, the East Coast. Um, yeah, the Board of Education, because I ran the computers for the Marine Corps, so I ran them for them too. So. And you ran them for 23 years. That's quite the career then. Yeah, that was a whole career. Did I and at the time, for... computers would have been real cutting edge stuff. You would have had to oh, keep it, up it, about every two years. You'd have to retrain, it, it, wouldn't you? Every, every uh, 16, 18 months, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. But our computers compared to everybody else's computer, I mean, we were corporate or they, everybody had the PCs and stuff. There, there was nothing compared to what we had. So yeah. I got hired right on the spot. Yeah. I, I My only experience of, of proper, proper sized computers was uh, in the, the 90s. I was an air conditioning engineer okay. and uh, I worked in New Zealand and in Australia. And we looked after the air conditioning in some computer rooms. And oh, some yeah. of them... The one at an oil refinery, the computer that ran the oil refinery in New Zealand, the computer room was like a whole, it was the size of a whole building, you know, it was yeah, it, enormous. It looked, yeah. it looked like a bunch of washers and dryers sitting around. Yeah, all just stacked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. totally different. There's probably more computing power in what I'm, the computer I'm talking to you on than there was in that. There's more in a, the cell phone right now than ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But it got yeah. the job done. It got the yeah. job done. So these days, I'm guessing you're kind of semi-retired, but you do work part-time as a bartender. No, I, I, I did do, I did bartending for 23 years. Now oh, I've right. Trying, okay. Yeah. Now right. I've been trying to get this book and business going for the last 25 years, too. So Okay. Uh, actually, you, you said you wanted to do Social Security. You got to read that book. Oh, Everybody I'd love did. to. Everybody Loved that read that it. book said it should be a movie. I got yeah. the reviews I did, but you know what happened? I got blackballed on, uh, on uh, Twitter and Facebook because they didn't like my politics because I, I talk about religion and I talk about, you know, corruption and stuff. And the government is as corrupt as they can be. Actually, yeah. I, my, my computer was hacked. My accounts were hacked. My book was banned, I, even though it was on Amazon. They took all my good reviews off, and I should, could actually probably sue them for that. But right now, I got Amazon's running, you know, this book. So, yeah, and so and this I'm, was I'm, because, but these, but your political views, and from what I know about the book Social Security, because I did an audition for it uh, with you. Right. Uh, sure, it, it's got, it's not really about politics, is it? N no, what it was, though, is I had in a book about, you know, how they separated Europe over in, you know, different sections. They wanted to do that in America. They wanted to do North America, South America, Mexico, Canada, and they wanted to have one bridge go all the way. They wanted to combine everything like they cr combined you guys over. And when I when I put that on uh, online and I showed everybody the website, they took it right down and they stopped it. And, I, the, and that's when the government went after me. And then they but wait a me. second! Don't you live in a country that prides itself on free speech? <laughs> yeah, that's my problem. That they're all corrupt. Right. The system is corrupt from the top down. Because the only time 
fr free speech becomes contentious is when somebody says something you don't agree with. It's easy free speech when you agree with what's being oh, said. Absolutely right. But the the key the key to it is to accept when people say stuff you 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 don't agree with and go yeah, well they've got a right to say it don't agree with I, it but i got they got a right to say it yeah i don't i don't respect the government that is corrupt as they are from the okay top down. that's my right. problem and i might was voicing my opinion and they did not like it so when you say the government do you mean the the current government in the u.s or do you mean all of them regardless of what political I, side they're I, on? I, I mean i mean the top of the line for the chain the fbi cia them guys oh the people who are really running it yeah really <laughs> not the <running>. politicians no. <laughs> <laughs> okay not the uh not the people who we think are running it or we're made yeah. to think are running it right wow right. wow okay so you've got you've got you know i've checked out your website i mean i followed you on twitter so it must be back now live is that since elon musk took over twitter and and yeah that, he's that, big that, on that, free speech that, now yeah. now i'm back now i'm back on uh, twitter and i'm on facebook so this is really going to be a big you know difference now yeah yeah really, and, and your really website works. is live and on your website you I, say I, you I, I just changed my website to a new uh store i used to be on shopify now i got uh what do i got i, I got one of the main ones up there but see shopify was also in canada and with the, I didn't like what they did to me either, because whenever somebody did a bank order and they canceled their order and stuff, yeah. I had no say of it. They, they, they were refusing to get me my money back. Oh, really? Is that they, because they, they were in another country or was that yeah, political yeah, they did. as well? Yeah, yeah, it was political because it was another country. I couldn't basically get the FBI to go in there unless they really forced some other issues. But it was it was only a matter of a couple thousand dollars and they weren't right. going to get involved over that. But. Yeah. It dragged my business down all these years, but I learned a lot. Yeah, Just but keep, it sounds like on. you have learned a lot, and and you're back now, but you're back wiser as well, and you're looking oh, out for them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah. you are you are a godsend. I, I almost died when I when I got your email. Oh, why? Your, why is that? Oh, I, I looked up who you were and everything, and you were the first person to audition and and, and the company. And honest to God, you you are fantastic. You you made you made my wife cry, tears in her eyes, and everything. Oh my God! Oh really? Oh, really? oh but it's yeah. it's in the it's in the writing, Bob. It's in the the <laughs> way that it, it's written. It's just such a wonderful story, and it's just yeah, nice. But, it's just but, lovely to do. You know, you just get involved oh, I, in it. Uh, you are the master. There's no doubt about it. And it's so <laughs> great. It's, I love it. Well, thank I'm you like, so much. But thank you mostly for writing such a great book. Oh. Because you know, you know, when you've got it, when you've got words on a page like that are that good, it's just oh, so easy to perform. Uh, you know. Thank you, Graham. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my my grandson Kai read the book the other day and he laughed. He died. He, he's twenty six <laughs> now. He was what eight, <laughs> ten, years, ten years old when I started that book, and so it's 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 a welcome for you helping yeah. me out over here. Well, so and, and I, so who? Sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say, I, I, you're going to like doing Social Security. I'll have that ready for you in a month. Is that okay? Right. A month. Yeah. Okay. Hey, look forward to it. Yeah, I got, uh, I got a slot in. Uh, I got a slot in June that it'll fit in oh, just oh. nice. Yeah, it oh, will. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Because I work on, I work on, I like to work on around, around eight books at a time. Oh so, wow. Yeah, but I've been a, a couple of weeks ago. I was working on eleven books, and it was it was pretty oh hectic. I'm not. It's just just because I work with so many nice authors, and it's it's usually people I've worked with before, and they give oh. me the book, and I don't want to let them down. And I look, and it's a great <laughs> book, and I and I do. And but eleven, you know, I'm going to go back and just keep it to eight. But yeah, I think in I think in uh, I've got, I'm on eight at the moment for May, and wow. I think I've got six already booked for June. But so I'll make sure you've got a slot for make okay. sure. Yeah. So I'll, I'll have that, this. I'll have this one all ready to go for you this time. Great. Everything be yeah. perfect. Now I know how you work and everything. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, and um, so who do you think? Who is the book for then? Who is it mainly aimed at? What kind of person is going to get the most from Surprise? Uh, actually, I did it for from a grandfather's perspective to bring family love into the situation and how grandfathers should be respected, which in this country, you know, kids don't even get to see their grand, 
parents this and in the old countries they they worship the people that are old oh the village elders are, are held up aren't they as as, as senior people but, but, yeah but over here it's like you're a burden they just want to throw you in an old folks home and so the old folks home it just flew you know and, and i was having i was die laughing writing that thing i just sit under a tree and write it and it just flew <laughs> i wrote that book in a matter of 30 days wow it crazy it just flew. wow that is that is good going yeah uh, so so what do you hope that people get from the book then just just a love of family and and stuff uh, not only a love of family, I mean, bringing humanity together and worship, worshiping God and yeah. bringing that important value is you got to yeah. have, you have to respect something from somewhere and you got to start yeah. somewhere. And people said, yeah. there's no such thing as God. Well, uh, personally, I believe God, we have direct contact with God through our, our conscience and our heart. Yeah. Right from the yeah. get go. It's, it's automatic. You know, right from wrong. Yeah, you're just lying to yourself if you're not. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's it's yeah. Somebody once said to me, um, he said, "Do you know how when you've got a, a choice to make between two important things, and you want to know um, whether the what the right thing to do is?" <laughs> Hello, matey. How are you? Say hi, Graham. How's it going? His name is Graham, not Grandma. <laughs> Graham. Oh. <laughs> I'm on the other side of a big ocean. Yeah. Wait to Graham. I don't know why he's being shy. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. He's allowed to. Uh, yeah. Go back, buddy. Okay? No. You want to <laughs> no, he says. No. <laughs> Be good for Papa. No. What a character, eh? What yeah, a character. He, he's my pride and joy. Yeah. No, I was saying that, you know, somebody once said that, uh, and I forget who it was, that when you get to a, a point and you're wondering what which action to take and uh, whether you should do a particular thing that might be slightly controversial the basic the the, uh, the thing you got to ask yourself is if you have to ask it's the wrong thing to do you you're know right. you know 100%. what the right thing to do is it's absolutely. just not always the easiest thing to do no they're just lying and to that's, themselves that's all yeah it's yeah People would would rather have the the ugly the the beautiful lie than the ugly truth. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's what I so, like about you. You're on the 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 real side of life. Yeah. You look well, at it from the right angle. Uh, well, I I think because I've done so many things. I mean, you know, I was a I was a pipe fitter on a construction site for three years, and then I was an air conditioning engineer long before I got into broadcasting. I did nearly thirty years as an on air broadcaster, and I've only been wow. doing audio books for three years. But the oh, people wow. I've met, the, the people I've met doing audio books around the world, I've done one hundred and seventy four audio books now. But the wow. authors I've met around the world have just been amazing. Met, I say met. I've met like this, you know, <laughs> but, you know, because uh, they've they've had the faith in me and the trust in me. Right. to take their work that, that a lot of them they've put everything into the, the words and i've got to get it right and make well, you, it work in audio form you, you are that's the other thing you are you're you're you're, you're the, you are doing the, the job you're getting it done right thank it's you very amazing. much bob I, but like i say i'll say it again i just appreciate the words you've written because oh, they're just a joy to do so easy such a joy to do so well written man i can't believe you've had so much trouble with um, things being shut down over over your actual over your views, what the hell is it anybody's business? What you think? I I haven't been allowed to advertise on Facebook or Twitter for almost ten years now. Wow, it's wow, crazy! And wow. they 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 tried to make it difficult. Uh, they don't really give you any any information in writing, so they they like to cover themselves. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't want to. Yeah, that's because they're changing the rules all the time. They don't want to lay any down or you'll work with them. You'll work around them because yeah, that's what smart get, people do. So the trick yeah. is to not tell you what the rules are. <laughs> yeah, they don't even know themselves. Yeah. They make them as they go. That's the bottom line. That's it. Yeah. Now, on your website, you say that it's time to set the record straight and teach our children what's really going on in this world. Well, so, that's what I that, what is my, really going on in this world is the fact that, that the governments aren't running the world. Is that it? Actually, I don't think the kids are being taught about God right from the right. get-go. Right, I, think I that's, see. 
the main problem is if you can't respect God, how can you respect yourself? It has right. to start somewhere. And now, even when I was a kid, I went to school and you didn't question the teachers. And if you did, they'd paddle you, you know, which I never got paddled. <laughs> My father would paddle them if they ever touched me. But uh, nowadays, the teachers are scared to death of, te- of the teenagers. Yeah. There, there, there's teachers that teenagers are like no! six, three in their eighth grade. It's these, some of the teachers are, te- are five, ten. They're, they're yeah. scared to death of us. A yeah. Or 12 year old kid. It's crazy. Yeah. So it's, and if they're not, if they're not scared of the kid, they're scared of what society will say about them. If they say the wrong thing to a kid, instead exactly. of just being straight with the kid, you know, which is going right. to be, you know, being, being a, a, a kid, you know, uh, but I think it goes everywhere. It's not just at school. It's like young people in their first job are. Oh, absolutely. You so molly coddled now. Peer pressure. You know, yeah. yeah, sure. I can remember, you know, my first job first. Well, I was an apprentice electrician to start with. That didn't work out. But then when I got my first job, I was at a plant hire uh, okay. place. We hired out plant, you know, like cement mixers and rotivators and, you know, generators wow. and stuff. And so my job was cleaning the stuff before it went back out again. It was a oh, terrible wow. job, but I did it for yeah, a year. Sure. But yeah. I was 17. And, and uh, I remember it was like the second day or something. It was... We started work at eight thirty in the morning, and it was like eight thirty-two. And I was drinking. I was drinking a cup of coffee, and the boss just just got stuck into me. He said, "What are you drinking a cup of coffee for after eight thirty? You start oh work God. at eight thirty. You know, it was right, like you right. learn pretty quick a from someone. Awakening. But he wasn't even that old. He was only about twenty-three himself. You know, oh, but yeah, right. it, but but that's the world of work. You know, and you got you got to pay your dues. Exactly. Yeah, and you've got to know the way it works. I, I think kids are, are, are given a really easy time. My wife works in retail, and she talks about, you know, there's a 15-year-old that she works with, and the thing she says, and I said, well, I would never have been able to get old, get away with that with my first job, you know. That right, right. You know, making people text, sitting texting on their phone. Like, we couldn't even make a personal phone call from work, you know. <laughs> exactly. That's it. You know, you weren't allowed to use the phone. You were there to work. You were paid to work. You were the clock. You were on the clock until, 5 30 and that was that but, yeah, yeah exactly it's the world has changed yeah big time. but but i should say though that this book surprise it doesn't get you know you've said it's about god and stuff but it doesn't get heavy it, it's a nice no, it gentle right. it, it's, yeah it's, I, did, I, I tried to make it like that because i didn't want people to think i'm all real holy when i'm, I'm far from it i used to drink and gamble and do all that stuff yeah, but I, but I, I'm honest, and I never cheated on my wife. So right. drinking and gambling is, I guess, a little bit. <laughs> I have a few vices. <laughs> Does did your time as a bartender help you with writing, with being uh, an author yeah. now? Yeah, absolutely. Because I everybody's telling your problems all the time. And yeah, you, it, 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 it was like a patent place. Everybody's having, you know, sex with everybody else's. <laughs> It, it was crazy. It was crazy. Because yeah. I would but, guess a bartender's job, you're part therapist there, aren't you? Yeah, ab- absolutely. Just like a barber <laughs> and, a bar- and a bartender. You got to listen to and give advice. The yeah. Best, the, the best you can do is just tell them to watch themselves and be, don't, you know, cool it down and they'll get in trouble. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't want to push them either way. You just want to let them do most of the talking. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I learned. But, and tell me about B for heart. Uh, all right. The letter B stands to B for something. Four right. means four. Heart stands for humanity and vision and real lights together. And what is the, the mission of B for heart? What do you hope to achieve with that? Uh, the whole world should be for heart. You know, live with their, their heart on their sleeve and help each other, basically. Yeah. Humanity, vision, and real lights together. That's what heart stands for. Right. And to get the young people to start thinking that way, you'd recommend the book Surprise, which is now an audio book. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's going to catch up. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bob, I, I wish you all the best with it. I think if anybody wants to get Surprise, I think the easiest way... I'll, if you're watching this on YouTube, there are links in the description on YouTube. Click that. It'll put you straight through to Amazon. And you can get it through Amazon now because I've checked. It is on there. 
Oh, so, it is now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you've got you've got something going right with Amazon at the moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so click on there, but you can get it through Audible as well. It's also available on Apple iTunes. It's available oh. there. It's called Surprise by Robert James Carpy, and it is a it's a lovely, lovely book. It's uh, oh, thank you, Graham. It's thank you it's so, much. so much fun to record what's yeah. next for you then robert is it is it social security or you got some other projects on uh well i want to get social security on an audio format number one because that's i think that's going to be the by, by star book it's it's it, it, that book's going to make you laugh it's going to make you cry i was crying when i was writing it killing people off and uh, and things that they were doing in the book Okay, we don't want to give too much away, but we can. No, right. It, it's about it's about some people who are in like like we we talked about who've been basically put out to pasture in an old folks' home. Absolutely. But and but got, these but these guys are not done yet. No, no, not at all. And oh my God, I, you're gonna love it. I promise you, Mac. Okay, Our and family. it's called Social Security. But the one that's out right now with the links in the description is Surprise by Robert James Carpy. Thank you.